Yeah. That works. And we're back. Okay, now we have blood returning from the lungs to the heart. Good deal. What do we need to build now? Now we want to build, build some valves. Okay, we've already built two valves, but how many valves are there? Yeah, remember the valves are one way. They allow blood to flow in only one direction. So we have our aortic simulator valve preventing backflow this way, right? The blood's going that way and not that way, and the valve makes sure of that. And then we have our pulmonary simulator valve that does the same thing. The blood's going that way, and the, it's prevented from going backwards. So now what we need are what we call our AV valves, our atrioventricular valves, and there are two of them. These are the valves that keep the blood from going from the atria, no, from the ventricles to the atria, okay? Uh, so what we need to do is we're going to build um, five little sperm. Yeah. So first take out tiny little bits. This is the bone color. Do you have bone? Did I give you that or did I forget? Son of a... Time out, PM class. So some people have the bone color and some don't. <laughs> you think you're one of our favorites, eh? After all the times you've been mean to me, eh? You're mean to me. Do you have a bone? You have some? Yeah, you gotta, sorry guys, you have to sit there and be patient. Sorry, Miss Wells. All right. I want to watch it. Yeah, Miss Wells, Donna Wells, she's the. You're watching it right now. <laughs> sorry, Miss Wells. Sorry, PM class. Was my face on there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not really. Okay, so we need to pick off five little bitty boogers like this, and just kind of like we made these, but smaller, okay? Smaller than those. Roll a little booger, and then pinch it flat like a pancake. See that? Pinch it flat. There we go. That's one. So we need to make five of those. That's sperm? Well, that's the head of the sperm. Wait, why is sperm is coming into the heart? We're not on the reproductive system yet. No, we're, these are not sperm, but they look kind of like little sperm. These are going to be the cusps of the valves, okay? So the, the uh, remember um, when you were in station one on your cardiovascular system activities and you had to label the heart, you probably found the AV valves, hopefully the uh, bicuspid valve and the tricuspid valve. And you saw that they have uh, two cusps and three cusps. And I don't know if I said that in the right order or not. And uh, they had the chordae tendineae attached to them and attached to papillary muscles. Does that sound familiar at all? The chordae tendineae are where we get the term heart strings. If you say, oh, you're tugging on my heart strings. Of course, that's not a real thing, but... Oh, really? That... Some people have heard it. Okay. I thought, isn't that when, like, their heart's broken? Yeah. Or you're... Or... You hurt old people. Thanks. Old people. <laughs> Okay, so I've got five little, five little pancakes. Now I'm going to roll out. Again, this needs to be very, very thin. I always see students make this not thin enough. Very, very thin. These are going to be the, the chordae tendineae or the little strings, the heart strings. See how thin I'm making that? Like as thin as a yellow? No, this is the bone color. Oh, as thin as the... Yeah, if you can make it that thin, that'd be cool. Okay, so see that? I've rolled some out. Now what I'm going to do... This is the left side of my heart. This is the left atrium and left ventricle. So which chamber is on the left, or which, which, uh, which uh, what are these things? A uh, valve. Which valve is on the left side? Yeah, the left one. Excellent. Yes, the left AV valve. How many cusps does the left AV valve have? Three. It's the bicuspid valve. So it has how many? Two. Two. Okay, so I'm just going to take this string, and I'm going to attach it to one of these pancakes. See that? Oh, pancakes. 
Yep. And now I'm going to lift that up as, yeah, now it's a sperm. See, now it's a sperm. See that? Okay. No. I'm going to lay a cusp. Now notice I'm working on the anterior heart rather than the posterior heart. Okay. I'm going to lay it right there. And then I'm going to let my chordae tendinae run all the way down to the bottom of my ventricle. And I'm going to cut it off like that. So that's a cusp. That's a flap of my, vent my uh, bicuspid valve. And I'm going to make another one. Yeah, you can. I can't do it. You can do it. And I'm going to put this one right here. You can do it. And I'm going to straighten out my, whoops, straighten out my chordae tendine. How many lines do you Two on this side and three on the other side. Three. Yeah, it's a tricuspid valve. Oh, I did not make sure. Three. 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 So we need to just have... You know what? You know what? Another thing that old people say? Can't, never could do anything. That's what my dad used to tell me. Well, can't, never could do anything. I can't do this. Yep. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I'm going to make another one. Got to have the right attitude, y'all. You can do anything you want to do. Except this. So, so we need a, you can go get a pilot's license or, and fly an airplane. You can get a jet pack. People have jet packs nowadays, sort of. Oh, you were talking about me because I said I wanted to fly? Yeah. Oh. I don't think I would fly. There you go. Like, by himself? Yeah. See? The pilot talk? <laughs> yeah, they have like their own like language. Like that's gross. Yeah. Well, that's gross. <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> that's, sorry. You seem confused. Alright, so these are the the cusps of these valves. Um, mine aren't very oh, small enough to do that. And again we have I told you to make them small. I know, what she and said. We have Two on the left side and three cusps on the right side. So this is my bicuspid valve and this is my tricuspid valve. And they're held in place by these, these strands. And these strands are thin, but they're very strong. Very strong, and they prevent the heart from going backwards, from the valves from blowing out backwards, okay? Whenever these ventricles contract, the papillary muscles that they would attach to down here also contract and hold these tight. So the, the valves don't blow out backwards, and they can. They can prolapse. In fact, one of your coloring sheets, if I remember correctly, talks about a prolapsed cusp um, where the cusp <laughs> sticks up into the atrium, and then you're going to have problems with blood pressure and energy and all, all sorts of issues. So this, these are our valves. Now we've built all four valves. We have our left AV valve, also called the, also called the bicuspid valve, also called the mitral valve, and then over here on the right side, we have the tricuspid valve, also called the right AV valve. We have our pulmonic semilunar valve and our aortic semilunar valve. Yay. And our heart should look like this now. You better calm down. I'm calmer you are. Are we ready to move on? No. Nope, this is it. I mean, Wait, this is it for right? valves. We're done with valves. Yeah, I would have them more inside the, the heart, inside the chamber, but that's pretty cool otherwise. Well, we still have to talk about blood vessels. We have to finish this, talk about blood vessels, talk about blood and the respiratory system. So it's, not it's supposed to be before fall break. I am concerned about timing. It's supposed to have our, our, our midterm exam... Our unit and midterm exam is supposed to happen before fall break. Say that again, please. No, a four by six. Yeah, you get a four by six note card. How big is that? It's four inches by six inches. What's the question? Yeah, you're going to get a four by six. Um, it's, it'll be combined. The plan is to have the theme three test count as half of your midterm 
and themes one and two combined count for half of the midterm. Is this better? Oh, so it's all one test. A, so do we still have to retake? And there won't be any group retake. Uh, well, I'm confused. So is it going to be a actual test? group retake really helps me, though. I love the group retakes. What? Is it going to be an actual test? Yeah, it's an actual like, test. Are they having a retest over chapter one and two? Yeah. What? Um, wait, so yeah. now we're learning this big section, but you're also combining other stuff in, and then we're only allowed to use appendix class. Yeah, and then at the end of the year, you have one that covers all six of them. Ready for me to be in this class again? A final. <laughs> are you ready for me to be in this Listen, you all are you all got this. Quit your belly aching. Yeah. This, this is, is right. this is being recorded, That's you know. I'm gonna play this back for you, all your belly aching. I'm gonna play it back for you. Done. Mm, no. If you're ready for it, it's easy. If you're not, then no. That looks great. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, time to move on. Okay, I think that I think that at this point we should build. Uh, we have blood flowing out to the lungs, blood flowing out to the body, blood returning from the lungs. What vessels are we missing? I'll say it again. We have blood going out to the lungs. Let me zoom in. Blood going out to the body. So two vessels carrying blood out. We have two circuits, right? Pulmonic and systemic. So here's our pulmonic outgoing. Here's our systemic outgoing. Here is blood coming back from the lungs. So that's pulmonic incoming. What are we missing? Yeah, incoming of the systematic. Systemic incoming. And someone over there said vena cavi. Good. Good. So let's get some blue. Now we're going to roll out some blue. These need to be about as big or maybe even a tiny bit bigger than our aorta and pulmonary veins. Great! Here's blue. Yeah, but you need blue, don't you? Oh, okay, cool. Yep, Sherry is caring. So roll some of this out. Like I said, about as big as your pulmonary trunk or aorta, maybe even a tiny bit bigger than those. Sperm thing. This is going to be way too long, so I'm just going to cut some of it off to make it easier to work with. Hello, Miss Sneering. I'm fair enough. How are you? We're making clay hearts. Don't they look lovely? They do. Look at how good a job they're doing. They look awesome. They whine and complain about it and talk about how difficult it is, but then they do a great job. They don't. They don't know. But yeah, they don't know their own self worth. I try to tell him. What's up? I need to borrow Lana. Lana. Oh. Bum, 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 <laughs> ba-dum, bum, ba-dum. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put my third one. In the, on the, in the right ventricle? I know that. Oh. Wait, is this good enough? Is this good? Yeah. Is yeah. Good? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that, that might be fat. That might be a bit fat. Uh, that's probably okay, yeah. Okay, so what chamber does this one hook up to? Oops, uh, my things are backwards, sorry. The right atrium. The right atrium. So I'm going to flip my heart over. The posterior, now I'm going to flip my labels again. And now we need it to hook up to our right atrium. My right atrium is right here, yeah? So I need to move... My pulmonary veins out of the way. See that? And then I'm going to take this loop. Now don't go crazy. But we're going to scoop out some tissue here. Scoop out some tissue there. See that? And I'm going to cut out a... Let's see, I'm going to measure... I want to be able to see this, so I'm, I'm going to cut it. I want to be I want to be able to hook this up to the hole, and I want to be able to see it sticking out. So I'm just going to cut it right about there. Okay, and that's all right. And I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. Remember how we kind of rolled this in our fingers to kind of make a point? Uh oh, my camera froze up. Dad gum, please don't do that. Okay, good. So see that I made a little point. 
And I'm just going to lay that right there and have it sticking up out of the heart. Now, for the bottom one, this inferior vena cava, I want to be able to see it down here as well. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and just cut it off about right here. That's probably all right. The, the vena cavae really are great big vessels. So I've got this kind of nice flat end. I like that. And I've got this one that's uh, not so flat. So I'm just going to kind of roll this into a point. See that? And I'll lay this in there. Now I've got the stuff that I scooped out, right? This piece that I scooped out. I'm just going to lay it right on top of that like a Band-Aid and smooth it all out like nothing happened. That way those vena cavia are really going into the heart there. I'm going to rub that with my finger, just kind of pet it. It's too long. I wouldn't want mine that long. I mean, it, to me that long is not inaccurate, but um, I just wouldn't want it that long. It's just going to get in my way. I just want to seal it. Then I'm going to lay my pulmonary veins back over. So we should look like this. No. Okay. See that? So now I've got my superior vena cava and my inferior vena cava. My pulmonary veins are laying over it there. I'll zoom in. Should look like that. Camera froze again. It just barely sticks out the bottom. I just want to be able to, really it would run all the way down to the pelvis. So if you made it like two feet long, it'd be fine. But um, I just want to barely be able to see it sticking out down here. Really it wraps around kind of this way. Because the heart really points to the left a little bit. So it really kind of does this. The left side, remember, the left side pumps blood to the whole body. The right side only pumps blood to the lung. Great. Yes, great. Thank you. I'm going to flip this back over so we can see what it looks like from the anterior side. That still, I think, is too long. I just don't want all that hanging off there, so I'm just going to cut that just, just so it doesn't get in my way. <laughs> like I said, this would run all the way down to the, to the pelvis before it splits. That's your pulmonary... Or, uh, I would cut that shorter so it doesn't get in your way. That's right here, sticking out sideways. What's your pulmonary artery? I'd cut it. Since when did it I don't know what you did. <laughs> it looks like it's always been that long to me. <sighs> I don't feel like it was. <laughs> All right. Oop, need to switch my labels. This is where we're at. Is this long enough? Yeah, that's good. We need to add... The heart is a really special muscle. You don't have to think about making your heart beat. It's controlled by the autonomic nervous system. You don't have to think about it. You can, your heart beats while you're asleep. No. Yep. Even if you're unconscious, like, like rendered unconscious through medication or you get knocked out or something, the heart continues to beat. In fact, if you've ever seen the Indiana Jones movie where the guy reaches in and pulls his heart out and it's still beating, or if you've ever heard you can take an animal's heart out and it continues to beat for a while, that is true. The heart can continue to beat for several minutes without the brain. Um, so is that why chickens could run without their head on? Well, it's mostly just nervous <laughs> tissue doing that. But, but the muscles do need to continue to get oxygen. So, yeah, that is a part of it. Yeah, muscle, the nerves are still firing. If suddenly you lose control, lose connection from the brain to the rest of the nerves, um, the nerves start going crazy and just misfiring. So that's why muscles, that's why there are convulsions so shortly after I death. Later on, when we get to the nervous system, we'll talk about Mike, the headless chicken. He's pretty interesting. Anywho, um, we're, we're going to build the nervous tissue, the heart. The heart can continue to beat on its own without the brain because it has its own little nervous system. So we're going to build that. We need to take the yellow. Nervous tissue is usually yellow. Great. Nervous tissue is usually yellow. And um, so we're going to use the yellow to make nervous tissue. And so we're going to create what are called the... Uh, the nodes of the heart, the sinoatrial nodes, and the atrium and tracheal nodes.
Trust? Exactly. Trust. I thought dress. she said stress. Oh, I thought she said uh, she stress. Said stress. I don't know how to do it. Okay. So take a little bit of your yellow and roll a little booger. Very small amount, right here. Very small amount and pinch it flat. And we're going to stick it in our right atrium, way up here. Yeah, if, did I not give you a tiny little bit of clay? You can ball one of those up. That'll be fine. And this is called the sinoatrial node. So what happens is this is a little bit of nervous tissue that tells your atria to contract. So whenever this fires, there are little nerves out here in the atria that says, hey, atria, it's time to contract. We're going to take another little booger of yellow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, we've got nervous tissue to tell the atria to contract, but we need to tell the ventricles to contract too. So we need to lift up our pulmonary trunk a little bit. Just move that out of the way. And we're going to take a little booger of yellow and just press it in diagonal, kind of caddy corner, from the other one. And this is the atrioventricular node. So we have our sinoatrial node and our atrioventricular node. Okay. Cool? Cool. So this tells the atrium to contract, the atria, both of them, and this tells the ventricles to contract. So I also came around and I gave you all some noodles, some very thin noodles. Who doesn't have noodles? Why don't you have noodles? How did you make these? I have a press that they need. You don't want to get those Play-Doh toys? You can get some Play-Doh Cool. So, the nervous tissue that runs through the ventricles is, is uh, built in a specific manner. So, we need to build that. First off, we need to take a very small piece of the... Oh. A very small piece of the noodle, like like little bitty. See that? Little bitty, like a little maggot. Maybe fold it in half so it's kind of thicker. There we go. And just attach that to that AV node right there. Okay. So we've kind of got a little bundle of nervous tissue with a little uh, stem coming off of it. And then we want to take the very thin stuff and attach it to that little stem on the right side, which will be your left, of course. Run it down this interventricular septum and around the myocardium here, and up the right ventricular wall, and cut that off. This is nervous tissue. This is telling the ventric ventricles to contract. Okay, now we need another one, because we've got the, the right ventricle under control, but we need to tell the left ventricle to contract as well. So we need to take another noodle, I can't take them apart. I'm going to steal someone's noodle. Thank you very much. And we need to have another noodle coming off of this little stem that we made earlier. On the left side. Okay. Run it down your interventricular septum. Have it turn the other direction along the left ventricular wall. Cut it off. Now, if the noodle breaks, just stick another one next to it. Not a big deal. Okay, and this is called, the, the word that we use, the name that we have for this structure is called the bundle of his. H-I-S, bundle of his. I don't know why. And now, branching off of the bundle of his are what we call Purkinje fibers. So you just need to take some uh, little noodles and just attach them and just have them branch off. You kind of get to a little bit of free uh, free choice here, if my, what my wife would call it in her kindergarten class. Free choice. And just get some branching going on there out into the muscle fibers of the heart. You see how I've got some branches? Just branching, branching, branching. Of course, in the body, this would branch, I don't know, thousands, millions of times. 
into the heart wall to control that muscle and tell it when it's time to contract. And the, the, the nerve, the impulse travels through there, right? It would start here and then make its way around. So it contracts in a really rhythmic fashion based on how these are arranged. And so we just put, add some branches along that muscular wall. Kind of blend them, make them look, you know, like a tree. Add some on the left side. And it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. The way the nervous tissue branches uh, after, the bundle of, after the bundle of hiss, these are called Purkinje fibers. These Purkinje fibers will vary a little bit from one person to the next, from one heart to the next, so it's okay if they're not exactly like mine. See, I just kind of lay it there where I want it, a whole big noodle, and I just I cut it off wherever I think it fits. And then I can kind of blend, blend the uh, nodes together with my fingers. Purkinje fibers, that's what these are called, Purkinje fibers. Cool name, cool structure. It's really neat. The heart can beat without the brain. Even the individual cells have their own nervous connection. We haven't talked about that because I cut out tissues largely for this year. Even the individual cardiac muscle cells have their own this tissue to control each individual cell. Pretty cool. When I was in college and I took physiology, I dissected lots of things in college. But usually they're, you know, had been dead for a long time and, um, you know, had been preserved with chemicals. So they didn't look very, very fresh or natural, you know. Um, but in physiology, we dissected uh, rats that had been killed right before we dissected them. They were, we walked into the lab. Rats were alive. The teaching assistant put them in a gas chamber and killed them all. Yeah. And then we dissected them. And it was awesome. We dissected them, so they were very fresh. By the time I got into my rat's thoracic cavity, its heart was still beating. That's so nice. It was awesome. You have to feel it I didn't have to. I think mine was the only one that was still beating. I'm, I don't mean to brag, but my dissection skills are on point. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I probably opened up the rat earlier than the other students. Sorry. It's not bragging if it's true. Is this good enough? That looks great. Yeah, that's that looks better than mine, I'd say. That's great. Okay, are we done? Don't mean to brag, but I'm a little good at this. I think this is a good stopping point. I was actually debating on whether we should move on past this or not. No. So what we've done, let's review what we've done. I need to get this nervous tissue out of here because that's weird. Okay, we built all four chambers. We built the anterior and posterior portions of the heart. And we have atria and ventricles. We have all four valves, one, two, three, four. We have all the major vessels of the heart. And we have the nervous tissue of the heart. And our heart, let me press these in here so they don't, again, you wanna press these in gently so that they don't fall apart, but don't smash them because we do wanna be able to take it apart later on, okay? Mm -hmm. So my heart can go back together. So now all we need to build is all of these blood vessels of the heart itself. This is so cool. All these little vessels. And we'll do that tomorrow. I think that's a good place to stop for today. This is so cool. Isn't it awesome? Yeah, that looks great. Yeah. That looks great from here. Okay. That's all we're going to do today. Good job, everybody.